What's up, everybody? It's the Sports Chasers Podcast. Coming to you live and direct with your host and your moderator, Kevin L. Warren, along with his fellow podcast brothers, Dorian, the DA Alberton, James, the Angry One Warren, Mike Mills, and Daryl, D-Dub Warren. This is a real sports podcast for real fans. This is a sports podcast with no hot takes, no narratives, just real, unadulterated sports talk. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and share our YouTube channel, Sports Chasers Podcast. We can be found on all podcast platforms, plus all social media platforms by searching Sports Chasers Podcast. All information is in our bio. Please be advised, at times there may be some explicit and colorful language. We are the defenders of the fans. Now, here's your host and moderator, Kevin L. Warren! What's up, everybody? What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's good out there in podcast land. This is the Sports Chasers Podcast, as it's been aforementioned. Hey, we got a new setup, and we got a new look, as you can see. Uh, check us out. As you see, we got the stuff scrolling down at the bottom. We got some other good things. We are live also on YouTube. Also, we're on live on Facebook, and we're live on Twitter as we speak. So this is, just, again, the Sports Chasers Podcast, and I, hey, I'm going to go from left to right of my screen. I'm going to have uh, my man, Dan. Dan, what's up? How's it going? How's everybody doing? My man, Dan. Dan with um, hockey. He was bothering me about his Pirates last night and how they was winning and then how they, no, excuse me, how they was losing and they was winning. Did they want to win in that game, Dan? I didn't really follow through. Yeah, they had a walk-off homer in the bottom of the ninth. All right, all right, all right. I see the, I see the Pirates coming through. Uh, D Dub, D Dub, what's good, bro? What's happening? What's up, fam? Yo, I'm excited, man. Yo, this look good. Nice threads, man. We're looking good. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Check out our our screen, our, our scroll at the bottom, man. Yeah. So yeah, welcome, sports chasers fans. Looks looking good. Um, the angry one, Eric. What's good, man? What's going on, family? How y'all living, man? What's good? Thursday. Let's get it. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, we got the DA. DA, can you hear me? He has some technical difficulties. I don't know if he can still hear us, but he's going to try to work it out. DA can't hear us, so I'm going to mute him real quick as he tries to work it out. Uh, Mike Mills. And greetings and salutations on this Thursday evening. Might look like he's in a spooky house. <laughs> but... um. Look like he's the incredible Hulk about to turn. Y'all wanted to change the platform and <laughs> on the with four days notice. Uh, no, actually, I I sent that out Friday, so go back to the text. Uh, Six days. <laughs> close enough. Thank you. A full week. Uh, anyway, with that said, man, uh, we got a lot to get into tonight. Uh, we got Derwin was with us today. He's going to talk some golf and all that's going on with the pga tour um who's winning and the liv folks and who's beefing over there man so without further ado i'm gonna give it to Duran. Duran, what's good brother what's going on man good thank you very much for having me back back it's been a while uh miss being on with you guys doing the british show. again i was out of town couldn't make it no big deal so the hottest topic in golf uh now with his back-to-back wins what actually the past couple of days, we've learned about, about the live against the PGA Tour uh, for anti-competitive practices alleging against the tour. So, so 11 tour players are 
they've joined the Live series. And so they filed this law- lawsuit, and the, the immediate goal is to get four of their players who are in the top rankings for the FedEx, which starts next week, to be able to compete in the FedEx Cup and win more. Maybe the tour doesn't want them to have, obviously, because they really want that control. But the real spot that came out yesterday was the fact that Phil Mickelson has been suspended going back to March. So that's why he didn't play in the Masters and any that they were beefing or whatever. They had suspended him for allegedly recruiting to join him on the Live series. So they were not happy with him trying to steal their his co-worker, so to speak. And uh, so <laughs> he was, he was poaching him uh. for <laughs> poaching. So first they said, you're out for a year. You can, re- you can reinstate in June. You apply for reinstatement. He was denied again, saying, no, no, we don't want you back. You're out for another year. That goes. So they filed this lawsuit uh, in Northern California, which surprised me a little being in Florida. But since they played six events in in, in California, I guess it makes uh, um, the legal part of that, but that's what they did. Okay, no big deal. So okay. this, so this week for the regular season of golf, prior to the FedEx Cup, the St. Jude Classic in Memphis. So there are players on the bubble, trying one twenty five to be able to play in the FedEx Cup, and then you got these. Oh, we we in the top of the stand. We still want to play, even though we're suspended. We still want to play and get mixed. Uh, and then an odd thing still going on. Some golf fans may have forgotten that Department of Justice has already opened an investigation in, into the PGA Tour's handling and whether or not they did engage in anti-competitive behavior during this. Right, it's been going on for. It's, been going behind the scenes for over a year here. But there's for uh, the live players in the foreign courts when and Ian Poulter, so Ian Pien Golfer, he's played on the PJ Tour and the uh, for 20 some years. And so now that he's officially doing live golf, they're saying now you can't play here. So he won his case in court and he got to play in the Scottish Open. Open last month uh, overseas, the British Open to you know, obviously go win some money and compete against your brothers. So it's great, good news. Uh, more live news. The third live golf event was last week up in course owned by former president, his group. Uh, Correct. Uh, I saw that. Yeah. So Henry that Stinson wins. That was out in Jersey, which is kind of odd. Yeah, New Jersey. So yeah. And, and because he's now a live golfer, captaincy for the Ryder Cup to be played in September. They're saying, nope, you're a live golfer, so you can't be the captain anymore. So uh, not, not good vibes on tweeting and balling, going back and forth. Uh, uh, but then what is hiding golf, of course, yeah, he has that the British Open, you know, three weeks ago, it was great. But since then, Tony Finau has caught – fire and well that's really good he's taking this week off obviously he's already in the top 125 for the FedEx tax uh get some downtown be ready, ready to compete uh start next next week for FedEx Cup money uh uh what else, what else? so in Charlotte is week uh, uh the Wyndham championship didn't play today I'm not sure who's leading after day one I don't work today in the office, so I missed all that stuff. Uh, so it's the last chance for these guys who are outside the to play their way in to the FedEx Cup uh, next week. Uh, if you're if you're too, yeah, go to the Corn Ferry Tour, go through their playoff series, kind of win some money that way, and that'll get started uh, in, in Indiana somewhere. You know, for those guys who try to make a little money in the year themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, snapshot the past, past few weeks, no. Mo- <laughs> No real Tiger Woods talk other than he turned down a boatload of death. But, hey, if you already have $800 million and somebody offers you $800 million, like, you're not getting it. No. 
I'm so Duran, let me stop you right there. So I've I've heard I've heard Tiger be a little critical of Liv and how you know he's uh I guess a homer for PG for the PGA tour. Yeah, being for- so, so what, what's your what's your, go ahead? Well, he, he's top dog in PGA tour. Go. So speculation is no, they pay Tiger differently than everybody else. He he gets a uh, get some some kickback from the PGA tour, you know. Because they've been selling him for years, right? So yeah, he, they owe him, and so uh, a full schedule anymore. So I can't see why he would join Liv, even though it's not a full schedule right now. So I never saw him leaving um, for money to do and, and all that other stuff. So it was never going to happen for Tiger. It was never going to happen. Gotcha. Um, well, so. Go ahead. Somebody else had a question. Go ahead, Dan. No, no, no I was going to say, I, I, I thought I saw an interview with him that he finally did it and talked about it. And basically what he was saying is the game of golf is about competition. And, you know, whether they play 54, or 72, whatever holes, he's like, what's the incentive to practice and get better if you're guaranteed money? So that, that was his thing is right. it was more about competition and actually beating people than just getting a free check. I believe that's what he said. And so, some, and so some, some of that goes back to, you know, a different guy wins every week. Uh, that's the hot putter one week. And I want to be rich. I'm not chasing history. I can't break those records that have been set before me. And the game is different now. As thick as I can, well, my body he's healthy and get out of the game yeah i was about to say yeah, we're not chasing history the, we're, we're, i said we're listen, the it's 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 easier it's easier said when you already got that money yeah and so you and also so the pj tour is looking at the how the grown over the last five years and how their salaries have, have grown the least you know so saw some numbers on that where like hey nfl players salaries up maybe like 15 percent Two percent, and so they're saying the PJ Tour is holding out money. But you know, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I can't see the books on it. So I, it all comes down to money. Oh, for sure. So let me ask you this: what 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 does this do in the in the meantime for the future of PJ Live? Can they coexist? Will this be just beefing going on? Will it, will Liv be poaching, um, you know, PGA people? Why can't they cause yeah, this so, if they can? Yeah. So, so there's a hearing. It's next Tuesday to see if those four guys that have been suspended are going to be allowed to play series. But there's other stuff in court. That this could take years before it gets settled. Certainly, to coexist, but the PGA tour sponsors are. Afraid of weakened fields product, and so now nobody's watching on TV. Nobody's coming out, out to the tournaments, and the dollars for pur- purses, and they're not, not getting the bank for their buck. That's the whole thing: the bank for the buck. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I think it's interesting how this thing has come, come, come down. They've. They've even said things, you know, some people have been protesting uh, the Liv's hands with the Saudis and how that's kind of been politicized and, you know. Kev, I, think, I think it made ahead. Charles Barkley scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Jory, yeah, I wanted, I did. Yeah, Charles Barkley, I <laughs> thought he was going to play. And then all of a sudden, he, he got really scared. He talked about the Saudis and all this other stuff. I mean, I get it. Charles played in the pro am last week in New Jersey, but he right. and she had not joined the live broadcast. Um, he had his reason for doing that. That's great for him, you know. And mm-hmm. there's, there's there's threats of a boycott saying, "Hey, if you allow these guys to play who've been suspended, they're not going to play." Now you got no tournament. What you going to do? Right. Well, uh, <laughs> you know that they're going to boycott an event. I mean, I don't think those. That they would miss a paycheck, right? Right. 
I think I think if they find some young, young newer stars to play on the PGA Tour, has been guys with those names. Let them go to live. Let them play less to make their money and grow your on the PGA Tour. Right. So somebody young and new comes along, start regular. There's your new star right there. But they're afraid, afraid to give that a chance to happen because the users and you know pulling the plug saying, "No, we're not. We're not putting out this money anymore." Right. Yeah. Well, and they talk about, and I didn't hear no more from last week either, where Charles um, Barkley looks like he was going to um, take that money, <laughs> take that money, and be a live. Uh, What's that? Uh, he was going to be announcer on the tour with them. Be announcer on the tour. That's always going to be announcer. Yeah. Yeah. He was going on. Um, but, but he got TNT. Talk, so you know, yeah, like you know, his sponsors, you know, Gatorade, McDonald's, whoever Charles is sponsored by, saying they're going to pull a plug on their deals with him if yeah. he joins Live. You know, kinds you have PGA Tour has been talking with, like the folks who run the Masters, folks major tournament, saying, hey. We Need your help in discouraging right. the play- players to to go, go join. You know? So behind the scenes, they're they're having all kinds of conversations and memos being passed around. You know they're hurting our product, which is hurting you. You know, stay united. That money is going to talk at some point. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Live start and expand their their field the next year to having fourteen tournaments. Versus eight have more players than 48 on the course at one time. You know, there's nothing stopping from growing 54 guys on the course with a shotgun start. That's that's coming next year. Do do you think that the play is better though? What the how the, what the format is? And the, the play is trash. And that's why I'm <laughs> as a golf fan, it's been trash. Nicholson has sucked every single time. He's playing in guys are shooting horrible, so just let everybody's gonna watch that stuff because it's not the best product to watch. Like, you want to watch NFL, right? So, if there was a USFL being played at the same time, nobody would watch, so they're not gonna watch nope. it when it's, when it's on at the same time. Hell, like nobody's, nobody's watching, watch, nobody's on their TV watching YouTube, watching live golf. It's, it's terrible. It's three days. It looks different. You know, if, you, if you've been watching golf for more than a couple of years, it's exhibition. Right. And that's what it is. That's not, not, it's not, a, it's not a, they're afraid of, of the weekend feels because on a, on a, on a down, down week on tour, nobody's really playing. Everybody in the top 125 has already secured their spot for the playoffs. Next week. It's a nothing tournament to the really good golfers right so it's a weekend feel the sponsors are not guys should be able to go and play somewhere else if they choose to and get paid this week even over like a lot of money uh you heard it right here uh Derwin Derwin pulled a, a bubble dub and said it's trash it's trash <laughs> Shout out. I, tried, trash. I tried watching it twice and I'm like this is not good. These like the big name guys, so like your Dustin Johnson, your Brooks Kepka. These guys are nowhere near in the running pockets line. You got your fat bellies. You're making your money. Like they, they ain't trying to win. Win for what? I'm just showing up and playing these, these three rounds and and collecting the money. They already got the money. So the yeah. little peanuts given for winning, yeah, it's more than you get on PJ Tour. More than that, just for signing with you. So I don't, I don't care if I win four million this week, seven hundred thousand this week. They're like, what's the difference? You've already paid me a hundred million. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, the, 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 the golf is terrible. It, it's, Greg, it's Greg, terrible. Greg Norman. What, what, what do you think about him, Greg Norman? And you know, he's over it. He's he's running the show. He had a beef with the PJ Tour for years about. Not paying the players, not being in control when they're the product. Uh, Phil Mickelson feels the same way. I mean, 
I don't know. Strange. So we had said here, and we, we, we're going to kind of jump out here in a, in a little bit. We had said here earlier when we first started talking about this, you, how, yeah, yay, it, was a, it was great. It was an opportunity to get more money for the players, right? The over but the now, as we can't win anymore. Right. right. So I, why don't yeah. they just why, – why can't Greg Norman kind of make this how they make the, the senior tour? Because it's all – You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so so you're saying um, because he's getting all the older. So I don't know. The guys agree. So they they, they want to go play, play live tournaments, get all their big money, and they still want to show up events and get more money. And that's the pro- right. problem. The players are like, no, you guys left. You can't come dip. And so the players wow. want to double dip, and that's the problem for the guys who. Had to go join live, and we're sitting here like we're still making our 1.4 million for a win, three for a win. Why are you coming back trying to take out a little peanuts now? Stay gone. You want to play left, right? Have less wear and tear on your bodies, but you want to come back and play in the majors. You want to come back and play full of shit. Everybody's greedy, <laughs> right? Everybody's greedy. Mm-hmm. Oh. Wow. So, but you're, I got a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go yes, ahead. Sir. So, my question is do you, what up, cousin? Do you ever see like a young buck game who says, you know what, I can't do all this PGA? I'm really about golf, but I don't see myself, uh, or I don't care to chase in the, 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 all of these uh, accolades that's um, rooted in the PGA. Right. Do you see a young buck going over to live and trying to uh, gain that? It seems like it, you say it's less competition over there because everybody's oh, so there to collect the check. Yeah, but do- right, yeah, Bryson D. Shazo, he's already left to go get the bag. Wow. Yeah. Major, we, we saw he's that. Yeah. One major, he's under thirty. He's a good golfer. He's got a good, good following. Tiger has, has completely stopped speaking to the guy once he signed with Liv. They had a good, decent, friendly relationship. Once he signed with Liv, Tiger's like, he haven't heard from Tiger at all since he signed. But yeah, they're young. There are a few young guys, there are a few under 30 who've left to say, you know what, I'm going to go get this, get that historical stuff. I'm going to wow. go <laughs> wow. So, hey, Kevin, hold on. Shoot. So, I mean, should people be mad at them if they just going to get the bag? I mean, it's, I mean, so so you can't be mad. Where do we go from there? Is they want to come back and do both? You can't go do your six live events, get all your money, then come back and try to play twelve PJ events because you've allowed guys for thirty years to play on a European tour and mm-hmm. the PJ tour. What's the you meet the qualifications to play in both tours? You play a Enough events on both sides of the pond. Okay, okay go play. But now, now, because Liv is paying your guys way more money, it's all, it comes down to the, the PGA Tour sponsors are afraid of the weekend field tournaments are going to have due to Liv. Certain names are not going to be there to sell those. And so the product is, becomes watered down some weeks. I can't think of what what else is a problem with having more opportunities to play. Right. Like, what's the problem to have more opportunities to play? So, is this Saudi thing a real a big thing for these people? Like, you know, because they you know they talk about nine eleven, the whole nine yards. So they is it? Yeah, they were protesting outside of the. Yeah, they were protesting outside. You know. Oh, they even heckled Phil Mickelson on the tee box about, hey, do it for the field, you know, and they threatened to throw a guy out of the tournament. For, I mean, that kind of stuff happens, but, right. but you know, it's, it's it's people's money, people's decision. You can't... I don't necessarily question Saudi I, Arabia. I mean, our federal government does business with Saudi Arabia every year. He was selling <clears> missiles and 
Why can't the golf mm. was get paid? Boy, girl, I can't even whistle. I can't even get my okay. mouth right. The whistle on that one. I, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just playing. Dorian, Dorian is cussing in the chat. But the golfer can't get paid. Like, come on, man, this is bullshit. But I just had to throw the question out there, Dorian. I'm sorry, but I, I 100% agree with you. As soon as my yeah, um, I'm not, I'm not, my you know, podcast anti nine eleven, but it's like, dude, it's about getting a check, man. It's America. Go get your check. This is what we do over here, man. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, you know, go get your check. We do. Yeah. You know, yeah. Hypocrisy at its finest, but this is what it is. Norman, we can't hear you, man. You got too much static in the back. I mean, listen, man, man, man. man. Hey, hey, turn your mic down, D. Turn your mic down, D. You can't hear it's me. It's off. Damn near off. Take the mic down. Yeah, so those all right, are a lot of things. Y'all can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Look, yeah. Hold on, Derwin, because my, my shit might go out again, right? So I'm going to drop okay, this whole bomb right now. What, right? Ready? Right. Number yeah. one, yeah. Tiger Woods. <laughs> Kim, <laughs> kids. Wife, hey, hey, oh, Kevin, oh, relax. Hey. Listen to what I'm saying. We in America. Don't get mad. Don't teach your kids to get mad at someone else for going to get the bag. Oh, he just said that. Well, listen, man, I, I didn't say it. <laughs> All right? You don't want to speak to Rochambeau or DeChambeau or who? Man, f you. Don't talk to me when I'm buying your house because your next wife leave you because you got caught on some pills driving the car into a fence F you all right you can't have it your way when you want to but then don't want nobody else to eat that ain't right we ain't gonna do that all right two this is just better for golf because reality is we wouldn't be talking about golf this much if there was no live this would be the week oh, exactly. of the Ari exactly. the arizona something playoff and that's that right and we, 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 we them championship in Charlotte when nobody's there. Yeah, there. and no one there, nothing happening. Yeah, nothing happening. All right, so let, let, let's stop. Ago. Let's stop playing games, all right? You know, the reality is this, man. Somebody else came with a bag for some other golfers, and they went and took it, right? Like they said before, the PGA is not a league, all right? It's an association, all right? You don't play right. for the PGA. Right. You play in tournaments that are either given by the PGA or some that are not, they're private. You don't have to necessarily be doing anything with the PGA if you don't want to, right? So say John Daly didn't like what the PGA auspices did. He didn't have to pay. He didn't have to play in a PGA-sponsored tour event for the last 10 years if he ain't want to, and he could still be rich. So yeah. my thing is just let him play. All right, because it's competition, and if you're smart enough, at the end of the day, what you're going to try to do is have some AFL, NFL thing, pull it together, and then have a championship at the end, and everybody gets a bag. This is pretty simple. We've, we've played this game in two different leagues before. All right, we did the National League, American League, the ABA, the NBA, the AFL, the NFL. What, are we retarded? Or did you think it ain't going to work again? Well, D, hold on, D. Let me let me stop there, and then we got to get out of we got to get out of here with, with this. Yo, with that said, and we asked Derwin Earl, we know you was having technical difficulties. I asked Derwin, and Derwin may want to reiterate, yo, the play, and Derwin sound like Bubba Dub. He said the, the play was trash in the lit and lit. So, I'm I'm, I, I, I'm just yo, saying, Derwin was a, a, a not So yeah, I give him his props on that. I, so, I, I I couldn't tell you. Either or, but I think for the regular person out here like me, we wouldn't know the difference. We wouldn't know the difference, man. That's just the reality of it. On a regular week, come on, man. Unless you're a golf dude, you don't know if this dude shot a nine under is good as opposed to the PGA Tour where he was four over, and that's good. Come on, man. I'm a project manager. I just want some entertainment, dude. Hmm. Well, you didn't sound really like a manage? project manager about two minutes ago, but... We, oh, yes, well, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. 
I, I, I curse people out for these millions of dollars, B. I curse them out. I get it in. I got you. Oh, man, what happened? Uh, Jordan, final thoughts, man, on, on PJ Tour. What's what's coming up for golf here? What's coming uh, up? So, of course, starting next week, you have the FedEx Cup uh, first event going. Uh, and then going for three weeks, finishing up in East Lake uh, there. In so, uh, we can uh, chop this up again right before the FedEx, wait until afterwards, but uh, look forward to it. Uh, it should be good start next week this is all which is why this lawsuit announcement was like perfect time timing for these guys got you got you man but i hope i hope, hey, they, I hope they can coexist that's all i'm saying I hope saudi pockets are very deep and this ain't going nowhere fast <laughs> nope Man, he is Derwin Cooper, man. He's our golf aficionado, as DA just said, man. Thank you, brother, for coming through, man. Yeah, really Always bless us with the, uh, the golf knowledge, man. And he also talks NBA, right. too. But um, uh, yeah. when the NBA gets back well, up and rolling, we'll have him back, too, talking about the, the WNBA. Real quick, before you go. Hey, wait, wait, Jim, wait, wait. What did what? you say? You so said about, WNBA? So I, I, said, I said oh, the NBA. Oh, I thought you just said the WNBA. I'm sorry. I said the NBA. You know what I said. No, Stop. it sounded like W. You can't get championship two years ago. Did y'all hear the W? Oh, I mean. What did you say, Jordan? I'm sorry. I was interrupted by this gentleman. Go ahead. WNBA, they, they can't draw any fans here, unfortunately. They won a championship probably two years ago. 4,000 fans. I, I think the sport's at the wrong time of the year, but they studied it prior to that. And, Thank you. And, and girl, girl ball in springtime. No interest at all. You know. Okay. Well, they're, they're debating whether I said NBA, NBA in the chat. Well, I know what I said. But anyway, uh, I'm going to give you a clap again, Darwin. Thank you, brother, for coming through, man. Appreciate Go you, my on, brother. Mark. All right. <laughs> Have a good one. Mark. All right, man. Too, Appreciate brother, you. Man. All right. Thank you, man. Right. Yeah, Thanks, Darwin. And thank you. Man, uh, that was a fun segment. That was a real fun. Da, we got your your mic fixed. Da's mic is fixed. And who else we missing here? Mikey, we got Mike Mills here. Uh, like I said, we got a new system going down here, man. Hey, we got a lot to get into, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. A here from Yahoo Sports, and this article is from Rebecca Cohen. And we haven't talked about this, but I'm gonna talk about it real quick. We'll get our things, and then we'll keep moving on. Uh, here, Brittany Griner. Um, she got. Nine years today. If you don't know, you've been hiding on the rock. She's been in Russian um, official custody for the last, since February, last last six months. Um, she got caught with under half a gram of um, hashish in a bag. She was taken into custody in Russia. It's illegal. Here in the States, it's legal. I'll start with D-Dub. What do you think about Brittany Griner and this Yo. whole situation? It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. I mean, again, she's in another country. She got caught with something else. It's egre I mean, it's outrageous. Nine years is a, is that's a long time. But however, you're in somebody else's country, so you know. Again, like I said, um, earlier today, I said I guess she she will uh, have a lot of love for the United States. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, here in the United States, that's you know, you're not getting that type of time for that. And, uh, you know, um, unfortunate, but she had it. It is what it is. She probably won't do nine years. She'll probably get out um, because, you know, the United States is trying to fight hard to um, get her out from over there. So that's all I got for that. Got you. Dan, what you got? <laughs> ah, I don't know, man. Like, I, I see both sides of this, but, like, you're in somebody else's country you break their laws. It's not the laws of the United States. It, it is their laws, which are different. Whether you agree with them or not, it's their country. You have to abide by their law. So, you know, nine years for, you know, pot uh, here. Yeah, that's excessive, but that's a different country. Like we talked about before, you know, on the phone or whatever, you know, somebody's country you go to, you know, you steal something, they chop your arm off. That's so, fact. I mean, you got to understand where you're at and what you're doing. You know, if it, I understand it might have been an accident, but it's a costly one. You know, like, you know, D-Dub said, you know, she got nine years. It probably won't be that. They're, it, eventually, they'll make arrangements and, and give them somebody they want. 
and swap them out. But, you know, just caution, you know, like you know, when you go to another country, you know, you got to think about what you're doing and what you got on you. You know, so that goes to everybody, because if that was me or any of us here, we'd be sitting there for nine years, buddy. There ain't nobody fighting <laughs> to try to get you yeah. back. So <laughs> guarantee you that. You know, I mean, I get it. You know, like like I said, it's a little bit absurd coming from our country, but it's not ours. It's theirs. Their laws. That's it. Um, so, um, Eric, what you got for me concerning this? Um, Dan and D already said everything that I was going to say, man. It's, I mean, it's unfortunate. It is what it is, man. Because hope she stays well over there. Don't wish no harm on, on, on her or anybody else or whatever. Um, you know, politics may be at play in all of this, but at the end of the day, um, hope she, uh, whatever, whenever she gets out, I hope she uh, learns a most valuable lesson from all of this and um, move forward and hope to see her back on the court because it um, looks like the fans need her. Gotcha. The DA, what you got, man? Nothing. I'm, I'm out on this topic. It is not a sports story. That's a legal story, and I really don't care. Okay. Real Thank talk. you, sir. Gotcha. Mike Mills, are you there? Is you there? I don't know what Mike Mills is at. I don't know what's what's going on with that. Uh, well, we got to go to the next non-sports story because, hey, it's here. Uh, Deshaun Watson, hey, we'll move right along. I guess Mike Mills with the NFL. Let me read this here real quick from Jim Breach, John Breach of CBS Sports. With the NFL now appealing Deshaun Watson's six-game suspension, there's a very real chance that his punishment could get worse in the coming weeks. The NFL, the NFL originally wanted suspended Watson to be suspended for at least a year, and now the league will be gunning to actually make this happen. According to CBS Sports NFL insider Jonathan Jones, although Judge Sue Robinson ordered the six-game suspension, Roger Goodell on Thursday appointed former New Jersey uh, Attorney General Peter C. Harvey to oversee the appeals hearing. Jones has confirmed Harvey will now have the the final say in the case. Uh, I'll give my two cents on this. Um, why have somebody render decision if you're not going to go with the decision? Good, bad, and different. I, I don't understand. So they got a person who's a legal authority. She was a former judge, and she rendered what she thought was best. And they did it with, within policy, right? She said, hey, this is noteworthy of six. And, and, and I'm not getting into whether he deserves it or not. I'm, I'm not even talking about the criminal aspect and the civil aspect. I'm just talking about, hey, they hired her to do a certain job. And they just, it just, it just to me, it's like we're, we're, we're starting all over again with the whole other NFL things that's going on as far as uh, making decisions on, on, things, on, on things of this nature. Uh, Dan, what you got for me with the, the Sean Watson stuff? Well, to your point, the reason why they're doing it is optics. So independent arbitrator, hey, you decide. And she said six games. NFL says, well, that's not very good. We gave a guy a whole freaking year because he betted on his own team to win. <laughs> we gave another guy that did the same thing, Mikey, for you. But only one person. <laughs> he got six games. Now you got, what, 20-some accusations or whatever. So the NFL, they look kind of bad. Yeah. Be six games. So I think it was the old, you know, rope-a-dope that we're going to let this person do her thing, and then we're going to appeal it so we look good. And then if we get turned down, hey, we still got our six games. If we get more, great. And then, then we look good for fighting for more. So, you know, there's still be the fucking Browns, but <laughs> – it is what it is. <laughs> Dito, what you got, man? Yo, this is crazy, man. Because, yo, I mean, this it's a reset, dog. You have to, um, you have to respect what she did. She gave him six games. I don't see what I'm not jumping out the window. It was six games. People disagree. Might have been too much. I mean, too little. Some say it's not enough. Six games. She said that was the reference point. Sue Robinson. That was a reference point because all she had to go on was the previous stuff from other. You had uh, Ray Rice. You had uh, Ezekiel Elliott. All right. So she just pretty much she, it's a reset for her. So she's just got this frame of reference. 
for what she got right now. I'm not, um, like I said, I'm not mad at it. Six games, three to six games, and let's let's move on. I don't to you to what you saying. I don't understand the NFL. What you said earlier, I think you said um, the whole thing about um, not looking good, the optics of it, dancing, the optics of it. So you know. You, you didn't, they didn't get the outcome that they wanted or people didn't like the outcome and now we're going to try to make it right. I, I You know, just my thing is just leave it alone. She made a decision. Let's move forward. Gotcha. Uh, DA? Yeah, I'm really close to the, to the last thing, man. It's, um, they told you on TV, man. They said the NFL is going to make their decision based upon what people are saying, whatever the hell that means. So, you know, if people would have been cool with the six games and no one would have had a problem, it would have been six games, we'd have been out the door. Right. Now all of a sudden you're taking public opinion in the mix of a quote-unquote legal uh, discussion. They shouldn't mix. That's oil and water, right? The public perception as opposed to what, she made her decision based upon whatever information she had at the time to make said decision. She made an educated guess. Now, because five people don't like that, you know, it it, it makes you look bad. You're, you're not being proactive. You're reacting. And you're never going to win when you react. So um, it's, a, it's a bad look for the NFL. Um, again. Because, again, they're showing that they're not able to have one set of rules that works and that they're going to, you know, sometimes you got to, you know, take that cast oil, you know, and just live with it and keep going. But the reality is that, you know, the NFL always has to look good. And even though, you know, you're the, the you make the most money and all the rest of that, you, you could, uh, you know, just let this go and, and see how things are going to kind of pan out. But the NFL is the NFL. So... To their own detriment, they're going to hurt themselves. Mike Mills, what you think about uh, this rendering on the Deshaun Watson thing? What you think? Um, I'm not a judge, so I can't tell you what I think would be an adequate punishment for what he did. But I can say that six games do seem a little light, and. Uh, I'm also not a fan of double jeopardy, charging people twice, even though you, you know what happened before or whatever. Because that's what they did to Ray Rice. Thanks. But the NFL just got to figure it out. Yeah, six games is too light, but you're going to repeal it and then give them some and then go through this whole firestorm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. Um E, what you got for us, Angry One? What you got? What you got? Yo, the NFL is just going to keep the Browns be browning. The NFL going to keep on NFLing. Um, it's a fact. This is, this is bullshit. I, I, say what you want. You bring in somebody in, you bring somebody in to do their job. They do their job and you don't like it. And then, yo, man. Anytime, yo, I'm going to just say That's this. like real life, man. Yo, man. I'm going to just say this. Anytime, just like what everybody else said, whenever you mix. When, whenever you are listening to public opinion just to make sure that you are doing right, you are fucking doing wrong. Okay? Rewrite whatever the hell you had. Okay? Get some sensible people. Hire them to come in to fix all that stuff up. And then go from there. Because the shit that you have currently is garbage. It is straight up garbage. Every time out, you make yourself look stupid. Because just like what DA said, you're not being proactive. You're being react of what that one said and what that one said and oh you back there what that one said it's ridiculous it's a joke you win. are running a, a billion trillion dollar industry off of what somebody on the outside said and what they feel miss me you're never gonna win you should have been a hit or miss for me huh but yeah, yeah it's, it's <laughs> <never gonna win. laughs> hey it's, yo, you are one hundred percent correct. I mean, I don't know how much more. I mean, you keep on trying to appease these people instead of just this is what it is and, and let's move on. I don't understand it. 
I don't understand. What the about NFL... the victims? But what? the more you Yo. put yourself out there like that, they all took the money. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing. We, listen, Ooh. the reality is this: no disrespect to those young ladies. None. They, they but... got paid twice. They got paid when their appointment was over, and then they just settled out of court again. So they got paid twice. All right. That's that's those are just facts, right? You can be mad at him for settling, but you can be mad at them for taking it. Because if you're that outraged, you, I don't want the civil. We're going to go to criminal court on this. Nah, no one said that. Mm. No one said that. They took their bags, and they don't want their name out there, so you don't even know, you know. Who it is. That, Who? That, yeah, yes. that cupcake, cinnamon, whatever. You know, you don't even know who she is. You know, and she could not be telling the truth, and we know that happens in life. But the reality, again, is with the NFL, they're showing that, one, owners can do these things, and it's okay, and players can't, right? That's Robert Kraft, you know, who mm -hmm. down by UKEF. He was doing the massage boogie, and it's all good, though, right? Um, I remember Jim Irsay got caught in the car with coke, pills, and prostitutes, and it was all good. Well, hold on, D. Hold on, D. They the owners, right? They said. Yeah, but no, but, but hey, you still, oh, you're still part said, of the league. Uh, I got you. Somebody said, but they own the league because Goodell is your is your boss. I mean, yeah, you the boss. No, no. You yes, in charge of the Goodell, right? That's why he can't now, be in this there you business. Go. That's because, this is the business. Yeah, I mean, that's that's why why this, is, this is why it's like this because you, if you had a business, nobody gonna tell you what the hell to do. Well, that's why Goodell can't be in the. Discipline is it, world because <laughs> Jerry Jones is his boss. It's his boss. That's why this whole thing is all for Gazy. It's all you're never going. You're never going to get this right. Because Jerry could the be owners, in the stadium. People could say, doobie, "What about the owners?" Talk you about say, for his cataracts. You could say, "What about the owners?" What you can point to the owners all day. It's not going to change. They are the owners. They own their own stuff. And I had this argument today. This, I had this very same it. argument this this evening. You can't let him do it. You just got to be like, look, man. What about being <laughs> fair? And somebody he said, what about fair? I said, what I about like it? That's what you're paying to get on the bus. Sometimes. <laughs> what are Not you, in Charlotte. What are you going to do? <laughs> no, ain't no bus drivers in Charlotte. They all on Kev, strike in Charlotte. Kev, so. Dan, what, what, what are you going to do? Uh, uh, you're the owner. You hit that skip button. What, what's that button, D, when people didn't pay their fare? Oh yeah, 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 the dump button or the skip. Oh, yeah, it's a uh, one of those buttons that you F five or something. Man, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what the the answer to this is. You know, man, yeah, my you know. man, the dudes are the dudes are really really uh, fired up tonight. Um, I'm going to change the mood a little bit. Did I get everybody on that segment? Yeah, we got everybody on that segment. We'll talk more about um, the Sean Jackson, but to piggyback on what Eric said, Sean, really, Sean Watson, Watson, Watson. Watson. Ooh, sorry, Deshaun Jackson. My bad, dog. Man, you oh, <laughs> put that man out there like that. Yeah, Why you yeah, doing like that, B? In uh, the WNBA, Deshaun <laughs> Jackson in the WNBA. WNBA got you twice, yeah. but go ahead. Yeah, go Speak ahead, of man. bosses. Hey, man. <laughs> the NFL yeah. has to get their stuff together when 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 this stuff, um, and they got to stop being on the defense. I thought they was on the offense by choosing this judge, this former judge, to be um, down with this, but. Same uh, as the Zeke case, Kev. Uh, yeah, same as the Zeke case. Same as the Zeke case. Anyway, hey, back to the back to the show here. We're going to go to our new segment, Hit or Miss. Hey, I get the fellas questions. They don't know what it is. It's off the cuff. They're going to say either hit or miss. So with that said, I'm start. Mike wasn't here last week. His computer did whatever. He wasn't here last week. He was here, but he missed that segment. Hey, so I'm going to start it off. Hit or miss, Mike. Hey, Jerry Jones is finally putting Jimmy Jimmy Johnson into the Cowboys ring of ring of honor. Is that a hit or miss, sir? Miss, he should have been did that shit. <laughs> Facts. That's a whole fact, right? And I'm not even that old, and I know that. Da. Facts. Jerry, you just, Mike. He, he's just an old, miserable old fuck. So he's just going to do whatever he can. That's just what he's doing right now. So, Boy, 20-some years after winning those Super Bowls. Uh, Eric, what you got? 
yeah, it's it's about damn time. I mean, that should have been the only one that's in there. I mean, man. Yeah, Emmett Smith. Yo, I. <laughs> When, when, when was this? I must have missed that. When was this? Yeah, uh, this was last week. Jerry Jones is finally right. going to put Jimmy well, Johnson. Did he? Did he actually give a date? Because uh, he no. said he uh, said afraid. he said, "Listen, I'm the owner. I put him in when I feel like putting him in." That's I'm the owner. <laughs> I'm the owner. Well, that's what he said. Yeah, he said, "I put him in when I feel like putting him in." You heard, boss. It's my stadium. It's my ring of fame or whatever. <laughs> The old crusty ass and shit out there. Wait till I put you in. That's what that old fossil said. Uh, Dan, go ahead. I, I agree with Mike. I think it's a miss. It should have been done. I mean, really, he made him relevant. And when's the last time they won a playoff game? Woo! Low blow, Dan. Mm. No, no, I'm, I'm stating facts. Yeah. After he left, it's been turmoil. Low. Yeah. Cowboy low. fans, get at me. That, that was low. Last time no, no more Cowboy fans on here. We had too many. Mm. Yeah, yeah, got you. D Dub. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's a whole mess. Uh, I agree. I mean, this is um, something that should have been done, and the relevance of the Cowboys has only been because of the media. It hasn't been because of their winning, or you know, it's been the lack of winning. So you know, Jerry Jones. Um, Excuse me, Jimmy Johnson was a part of all the, the you know, that Super Bowl, well, the, the three. Uh, so, you know, yeah, he should have been in that a long time ago. But miss, gotcha. miss me with that. All right, cool. We're going to move on to the next one. Hey, Draymond Green lobbying for a max deal. He threatens to win brings with LeBron. Hit or miss, Eric. Bro, oh miss, 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 miss. I mean, miss. Just like how Draymond. Martin, Mike, before you get started, just like how Draymond was missing in, in the first couple of games. Yeah, miss me. Keep on missing. Keep on yeah. missing. Look, man, I yeah. understand. Me and me and D Dub had this conversation uh, earlier. In the Listen, Draymond may or may not get in the Hall of Fame. If you ask me, he wouldn't. But whatever. Um, but he's definitely a core piece of what winning is in Golden State. So if he's going to sit out there and lobby for him to get paid, he probably will get paid. But if you go anywhere else, you would not get that bread, dog. You would not get it because you don't have the system. Like everybody want to call uh, Tom Brady is a system quarterback. Draymond Green is a system player uh, for Golden State. So, um, but miss me. Um, Draymond, you've already been stealing from the league as far as I'm concerned. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's a bunch Ooh. of them, but we'll, we'll get into that later. Gotcha. Uh, D-Dub, what you got for this? Yeah, definitely miss me. You know, I feel Draymond. Draymond, you know, he's a good player, great player, good player for that system. But um, as far as getting a give, if I'm an owner, giving him a max deal, you got to be kidding me. Stop. No, I'm not giving that man a max deal. No, sir. Miss me. Mike Mills. Um. Now, y'all know I'm a Draymond advocate. So I'm yeah, you know. not gonna play too much of this. Hey, we named the episode after you, yes. But but the end of the day is um it's a miss for me. I mean, like I get why he wants the money, but at a certain point of your career, you have to understand the point of building for Business. the future. So if you right. that too, but building for the future, if you take a max and they still gotta pay pool and wiggins and clay, it's not gonna work. So I mean his numbers is cool, but he don't deserve it. He needs to chill out, take a little bit less. James Harden didn't get a max, and you know he could have got one anywhere. So, hey, thought, you, uh, hold on. I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, Kev, no. Real quick, <laughs> real quick. The guy said I gave Golden State four titles. Now really? I know what he was saying, really? but stop. Really? Yo, Draymond's that like, Draymond's that hype in 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 the rap in the, in the rap. He's in, Tony Yayo. Stop it, man. He's, he's not, all right, dog. Wow. Nah, that, oh, that, all I'm gonna say is Tony Yayo. <laughs> <is> Tony Yayo. <laughs> <is Tony Ayo. laughs> I like Tony Yayo. Tony Yayo went gold. Yo, Tony Yayo. 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 Yo, man, if he gave wow. Golden State them four chips, he must have been um, one of With the Brittany. three screws 
one of the three screws that's part of the handle of of the the basket. Diego Slander in the game. Them championships in. You that's wasn't the defensive basket. player of the. You year. wasn't the hands that guided it. So let's be clear. Hmm. I, think I mean, he was the point guard for four championships. I, I think it's a miss, but the reality is, in this era, this is the era where players will do self promotion. So I kind of just expect it. You know, because to me, if you got to explain the joke, it's not a good joke. So right. I mean, everybody knows who he is and what he's what he's done. And you know, if Latham wants to pay him, it's because he's made that money back already, and he's saying, "Here, this is your Udonis Haslam year twenty two in the league, three million dollars a year contract for you, equivalent type thing. Like we're going to pay you anyway, because he's always going to add because he's never scored it. He doesn't score it anyway, so you're not getting." It. Saying, you know, whatever it is that he does, that he says he does, if the owner feels it's worth it, then they'll pay him. And now him going to play with LeBron and all the rest of that stuff, that should not even register on anybody's radar. I wouldn't even care if you go. Go. <laughs> he ain't going with LeBron because he can't yeah, shoot. Just be LeBron another person like with the Lakers that, that, that needs the ball. That's all. Well, Dan, hit or miss, uh, Draymond Green. Uh, what you think? I'm going to say, miss. I mean, why are you going to give this guy a bag and handicap your team in the future? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to spend all that money on, on one player that, Preach, like you said, he doesn't score. I mean, no offense. I watched, you know, very little of basketball this year, but I did watch the final, <laughs> and I did watch the man build a house on the backboard. Mm. And he, he, you know, I, I, I mean, I can't see giving him all that money and, like, as far as the four championships, I think he had a couple other good players there with him that kind of helped him. I think it was more of a team thing, not an I thing. Okay. Not anymore. Yeah. Oh, well. Let me let me move on to the next one. Uh, Zion Williams has a weight loss. Hit or miss. Because <laughs> you wrote oh, the <laughs> these, these weight, these clauses and these contracts. I don't want a weight clause. Yes. Yo, you know what? <laughs> Some guys have to have clauses in their contract, man. But um, you know, it's okay. This is a hit yeah. for me. I mean, you know, it's okay. It's okay. You can have okay. a. It's all right. Okay, Dan, what you think? Hit or miss? I'm gonna say miss. I think these like egregious co- uh, contract clauses are just dumb as hell. If you can't keep his weight down, guess what? You get cut. You don't get money. Just let him go. Simple as that. Simple as that. E, you, your, oh, your guy is going through a clause with. Some, some. <laughs> Yo, man, some, I, I, I say like this, man. There's clauses in, in a lot of contracts that are not talked about. Um, The only reason why we're talking about this is because A is Zion and B is we're in 2022 with monkey pox and all different types of stuff out here and 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 anyway it's a miss for me however i understand why some guys need closes i don't feel like it should be out to the public but whatever gotcha uh mike mills what you think hit or miss zion has a weight clause the hit, if he would have kept his weight now, he wouldn't be having these issues. You know what you need to do to sustain the career you want, so you need to do what you need to do. And I, and, I, and it makes sense. Like, now nah, let me get some of that bread back. Listen here, brother, if you don't hit your benchmarks, unless it's something crazy, like the man's never going to be 190 pounds. But, like, yeah. oh. as long as you're in game shape and it, and it makes sense, I think it's a hit. Same thing for Kyler. They was talking about Kyler wasn't studying in college. So, listen, if you got a history, if you're a repeat offender, this is a, this a repeat is offender. A, yeah, some of these dudes are repeat offenders. I love it. You I can't love do it. what you want forever. So, you got to pay the piper someday. So, yeah. mm. <laughs> Sound like you need to be a mayor in some, <laughs> one of these cities. But go ahead. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mike Mills. Uh, uh, DA, what you got? Yeah, they've been having these closes and contracts since John Hot Plate Williams in the 80s. So, 
it's, it is what it is. Oliver Miller had one. If it keeps him on the court and keeps him playing, fine. If he loses the weight and still gets hurt, fine. You know, sometimes shit just happens that way. You know, that's all. Really ain't much else to it than that. Yeah. Maybe if Shaq had a weight clause in that L.A. deal, maybe he would still won some titles and shit. On the Miami one. The Miami yeah, one. You, so, you, know, you know, the Miami one has been very critical of uh, the of Shaq. The Diesel, yeah. The Diesel, yes. So Shaq, he wasn't the Diesel the in Miami. That was show. eighty-seven. Unlet it. <laughs> well, we, you yeah. know, you got a problem when everybody back in the, I can't remember what year it was, but back when he got traded to Phoenix, everybody talked about how great the uh, the trainers and the medical staff there in Phoenix was, and he was supposed to get into shape. How you gain twenty more pounds after that, and then you go to Boston look like a. Job of the hunt. I'm not. Shout out He's to big. Shaquille O'Neal, man. I ain't got. I ain't He's... got no beef with Shaq, man. But um, yeah, he needed one. Looking like he the big green shit. monster. Looking like Fenway Lake Park. Probably, that green jersey. Well, Lakers still might have gotten beat, but. Well, he got. Oh. He got gassed when he went out to L.A. and do his told him to lift weights and get all that muscle. If he'd have been Orlando weight Shaq. Yeah, Orlando weight Shaq. They, yeah. Would, they yeah. would. They would. Have, they would have won five trips. Yeah. Easy. Definitely. Easy. So. All right, let me go. I'm sorry, DA. No, no, let me hit you. Let me let me hit you with the the, the next one. Uh, we're still in the NBA. NBA uh, is going to investigate the New York Knicks on the Brunson trade, saying that this is um, maybe tampering. Mike Mills, what you think? It's clearly tampering. Tampering always happens, so it's a miss for me. It's over. He signed it. Who cares? Okay, DA. Yeah, you know, it's, it's going to be bigger than that. I already told y'all. I just can't go any further. It's going to be bigger than that. It'll be bigger okay. Than um, Eric, what you got for us? Uh, it's a miss. Uh, I mean, what? What? Are, I mean, what are they going to do? Like this tamper? Like, like Eric, we all know this shit been going on for years, right? So, what are you going to do now? Now, now you want to talk about it? Now you want to enforce your laws? What are you going to do? Huh? Were you gonna say you want Beto? You want Beto this trade like you did to Chris Paul? No, I'm not whoa, even going there. Whoa, 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 away from that. Let me the hell away from that. Eric. Yeah, I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. My bad. Our legal correspondent told me to retract my last statement, so I'm gonna delete that out. But um, yeah, man. I mean, yo, know, man, it is what it is, man. Oh uh, man, is. Dan, what you think? Uh, uh, it, to me, it's just, you know, it's something that happens all the time. And whether it's the team talking to the player, they're all friends in the league. They're all talking to each other saying, you know, just like the back in the day, they all said, hey, we're going to all go sign with this team to win a championship. You know, it is what it is. Just let it, you know what I mean? I don't care. Gotcha. <laughs> D-Dub. I don't know. I got mixed feelings on this, man, because you got the owners signing – you got Leon Rose. You got all those guys. I mean, I guess it's, it is a miss, but it just it just seems dirty, you know. Or they're gonna have to get they're gonna have to re revamp the rules about tampering and this whole thing because how are you gonna stop this, man? In the age of social media, you're not. Man, they, you're, you're not, not going to stop this, man. You're not. So you're gonna have to change these rules, and you know, let it be, man, because these guys are getting together after the off season or whatever the case is and right. you know they are talking you know i don't know what else unless you're going to put an extensive hit them in the pocket so hard that's the only way you're going to stop it and even well, then even then well, it's going to be well we're going to talk about it here in a little bit but the dolphins lost a couple of picks I mean, and that's another thing. I mean, you're gonna have to do something in, to that to that extreme in order for it to stop. If you don't want it to happen, hmm. gotcha. Let me move on to my next hit or miss topic. This is this is good. This is good. Uh, hey, the Cleveland Guardians are in second place, but their attendance and their ratings are down. Is this a hit or miss because of the name change? I'll start off with Dan. I don't think it's necessarily because of the name change. It's just, you know, have they been playing this well the last few years? Is that why, you know, maybe they weren't been doing as good as they have this year? The attendance is not there. I mean, look at some of these teams, like, you know, um, the A's, 
Yeah, they can't get people in the building. The pirates, they can't get people in the building. I mean, I think it's not because of the team or the team name. I think it's more, you know, the economics right now where everybody's getting squeezed with gas prices and everything else. I mean, it, it's got to be absolutely just bonkers to, like, go to, especially, like, a big city. Or even, like, a Cleveland or Pittsburgh, it's $20, $25 a ticket, you know, fucking hot dogs, $8. You could buy the bonds and the dogs and cook them at the house for less. <laughs> yeah. Sure enough. And, and you got fucking parking and everything else. And then by the time no. you sit down, sit down and watch your team, you're, like, 120 in. Yeah, I don't and, care how good your team is. And then, you watch, then you watch the bullpen choke and you know almost lose you the game. It's just like you know, it takes years off your life. Da, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll go with there. Economics is the biggest factor. I don't think it has anything to do with the name of the team. Like, you know, it doesn't really matter. Fans are fans. It's expensive. Yeah. So. Uh, Eric, what you got for us? Yeah, I I, I agree, man. Um. If you're a fan of the team, I think we, we touched on this uh, the last time, you know, with name changes of, of, of uh, arenas and all this other stuff. If you're a fan of the sport and a fan of the team, you know what I'm saying, you're going to continue to go. It's not going to be because of, oh, you know, they changed the name, this name is whack or whatever, whatever. We will see. I guarantee you, I, I know I'm going left real quick, but I'm going to go left. The Washington Commanders is still going to be sold out, even with all that drama that's going on with that whack ass wow. fucking owner. It's Say still it going to be packed out. So um, I, I will say it will be economic, just like what Dan DA said. I'm going to follow that train. Miss me. <laughs> D Doug, go ahead, man. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, totally miss me. It's not the name, it's your prices, it's everything else that's going on in this country. Um, you know, and again, sometimes your your team can be good, and just you know, sometimes you're just getting squeezed right now, man. I'm sure maybe the attendance is not, you know, where it's supposed to be at and around the around the league. So you know, um, you know, and and when baseball is struggling with, you know, with their game and trying to get people exposed to it and more, so you got it's a lot of stuff going on. But Cleveland is usually a a, a pretty good fan base, but at the same time. Uh, Dan brought up a you know a, a great point that economics could be the reason why, even though they're good. But you know Cleveland is uh, it's a blue collar town, so yeah, I agree. Um, Darwin did say this in uh, chatting with him. He was saying that uh, winning cur- cures all ills, right? Um, Cleveland was just in the World Series a couple years ago. Man, is that correct? No, wait, yeah, right? No, wait, no. <laughs> Wait, what? No, it wasn't, wait, it wait. We played it double dutch. Wait, no, yeah. wait, wait, no, wait. Get yeah, in there, like, get in there, Kev. I, 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 like I, like I was like like several. Yeah, it was a couple. It was have several a, have years. an argument with yourself. Several years yeah. ago. So, yeah, winning cures all. Um, <laughs> if you w- w- build it and win it, they'll they'll come. Um, except probably for Oakland, where they're building. It stinks, and uh-huh. they need somewhere else to play. Unfortunately, the place is awful from reports. My last one, and y'all probably going to quit on this one, but I don't care. I'm, uh, I put it out there. <laughs> so here I go, and let me see who roll the eyes the first. Hey, according to the Four Letter Network, Arch Manning, his ratings have dipped. Is that a hit or miss? Being that he's supposed to be the next Messiah, a quarterback. Ooh. What? Wait, wait, what? <laughs> his rated? What ratings? Ratings on what? Yeah. His ratings. He's 16 fucking years old. <laughs> what are we talking about? What are we talking about? Freshman this year. Stop it. Yo. As I said, they didn't like that one. So. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I mean, I didn't understand. I'm not following. <laughs> yeah. That, go, go ahead, Dan. You had something. <laughs> no, I say that's an L. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that was. Yeah, you that can was, miss me bad. because you don't even, yeah, you, you don't even have to get out the driveway with that one. Put that bitch well, as a, well, as a Texas fo- Texas Longhorns football <laughs> fan, I know who he is because he's coming. He's playing for us this year. But, yeah, it's whatever. He ain't touched the field yet. Let's see wherever we touch the field. Everybody's the man in high school. So, shit. Let's see. Everybody's the man in high school. So, that's it. Oh, so that was our hit miss six segment. I, I believe I missed with the last one. Hey, we're going to go to Major League. We're going to go to Major League Baseball. A lot of trade. Um, 
trades went down the other day on um, Tuesday, I believe. Not believe, but Tuesday with Juan Soto being the biggest trade item. Juan Soto gets traded to the um, San Diego Padres. He was immediate impact last night. I believe he had a single. He scored a run. Uh, that thing with the scary out there. <sighs> Da, you know that's your second team. Uh, give us a give us some words on the. Yeah, that, the Springs when that trade. I was telling y'all that on the first day. That going to be scary. From the infield to the outfield, and they still got arms. The thing is that you know in that NL West, you can't get back games, right? So if you're ten behind, Mike, you're just ten behind because I don't think the Dodgers. The only way you'll catch them are those head-to-head -head series, and you got to sweep. You know, that's the only way you'll catch back up. So we'll see what happens. Um, the Dodgers still, I think, have a decidedly large margin from pitching. And we, we still know that's what wins you uh, World Series is pitching. So um, it's going to be interesting. I, I, li I like to see those races come down to it at the end of August and September. Guys going hard to get in. So because you're going to have to make it in. You're going to have to make it in. What do, you, what do you think about San Diego's arms, their pitching? Because we all know ultimately that's what's yeah, going to get don't, you. they don't have enough. Just they don't so, have enough. So, yeah, so we'll, we'll see yeah. what happens towards. There still could be moves that could be made, and I think they have one or two guys coming back. So, uh, and then it's, it's kind of like a match from it. Like, you know, you're not going to have, like, Sandy Koufaxes and guys pitching complete games. They're going to start manufacturing, you know, five innings, four innings here, three, this – getting to the end of the season and hopefully somebody will come up at the end as a guy that's reliable for the playoffs but they'll have bats they may not have any pitching to match that but they will have bats but like anything else with bats right you can just pitch around it you don't have to pitch to everyone you just don't have to do it so you know we'll see it should be interesting you know, I, I, I love to see when teams are going all in to win that's all. I'm with. I'm all about that life. Gotcha. Um, we see here with the, with the excuse me, with Juan Soto going to the um, um, Padres. What? What? Uh, I'll go with Eric with this question. Eric, the Washington Nationals. They just won. They won the World Series three years ago, right? What is going on with the Washington Nationals, in your opinion? Nothing. That's why he didn't want to resign with them. <laughs> It is absolutely nothing going on. Okay, you had Max Scherzer, you had uh, Anthony Rendon, you had um, somebody else that I'm, 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 yeah, but you had all star caliber players that you did not feel like um, they was worth resigning for or, or whatever, and that's fine. So you expect your 23 year old phenom to stay there for 15 years, 12 years? No, nah, nah. he's already seen that end of the tunnel and he don't want to be there he don't want he don't want to be there uh 10 years down the road still doing the same thing reshuffling talent and as soon as somebody gets good they send them away and all this other stuff nah he nah nah nah, nah. um it's, it's it's sad man we gotta remember this washington team is the same team that came from montreal right what did montreal do same thing got rid that. of everybody <laughs> that. and they didn't even win they didn't even win a, a, a world series so i don't this is this is what they do i mean you don't want to pay them okay All right. you better you you better have a elite farm system to keep your team relevant they don't look at you and another thing i don't understand this man had two and a half years left on his deal why did you feel the need to re-sign him now why did you feel the need to trade him now well i i well they came up with this ridiculous proposal right there not proposal but they their offer to him to stay, which was to me, I think it was a slap in the face. He wasn't gonna, he wasn't gonna stay in with that, with the amount of money and the amount of time. Because you know, as soon as three or four years come up, his his contract is obsolete. Hell, right. maybe maybe two weeks. I mean, two yeah. two weeks. So yeah, it wasn't ahead. it wasn't it wasn't the money, uh, so so to speak. It was no. the years. Them years. Yeah. I mean, you 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 handcuffing me down to. 14 with 14 year deal come on man I, I mean as a player now to me it doesn't even make sense to, you know it, that used to be the thing for baseball to sign these mega you know long-term deals but the way the money is coming 
you might as well just hold out and bet on yourself. Bet two on yourself. year, two year deal, the most. You understand what I'm saying? And and, and rock it like that. Now getting back to the, the the Padres, I mean, it looks great on paper. I know they got you know what I'm saying. I, but my whole thing was again, yeah, you got the bats like Da said, but what about that pitching? I don't know about their pitching, what the pitching looked like. And uh, as far as uh, Washington is concerned, yeah, Washington is definitely pulling one of the Marlins deals. The Marlins did the, you know, we we talked about, um, um, you know, we've seen this before. We, we, right. we're, we're old enough. We, we've seen this before. You know what I'm saying? The guys, they win a chip, they win a championship, or they get there, and they just start to uh, uh, kind of um, get rid of people. You know what I'm saying? So they could uh, redo it, you know try to do it again and sometimes they some of these teams have been lucky to do it again and hit uh you know light you know strike lightning in the bottle again and get to uh, a world championship so you know, it's, you know Let me, it's, it's i just want to chime in real quick uh derwin you know he's a big nationals fan he said uh the, the nationals are for sale and payroll is an issue well i i will say to that okay that's understandable but then again it's not if if you're for sale why are you trying to sign a guy f- for 15 years for 400 some million i bring the price up because you got him yeah but you don't have anything else though like that still doesn't yeah, make yeah. sense they still both those either I'm, way i'm just saying man i don't know <laughs> uh it's my team winning so i don't i don't, I don't have... <laughs> Speaking of his team, and I got the NY in the locker and NY on today. Hey, the, the the Yankees, they they did well. I think the Yankees did a real good job at the trade deadline. They got Andrew Benatendi, Benatendi from the Royals. Uh, they also they traded. Frankie. They go ahead. They traded Frankie. Um, they acquired Frankie Montes from the from the A's and Lou, Lou Trevino. Also, the for Ken Wolchick and Louis Medina. They got Scott Efros from the Cubs. Um, they traded Joy Montgomery to the Cardinals um, for Harrison Bader. I think that was a good move. And because Harrison Bader, because Joey Gallo was bad like a buck 11. But I think Joey Gallo, when he goes to the Dodgers, um, they say he was already growing his beard already because he knew he was out of there. Uh, I think Joey Gallo having to change the scenery. I think Joey Gallo will be a force to reckon with, uh, yeah. with the postseason. I think yeah, hundred hundred percent. He why just didn't have it yet. Them. <laughs> well, why did you? Why didn't the Mets actually? The Mets didn't do nothing. What was, what was that about? I mean, y'all we got the Grom back. We did a. We did a That's, that something. was that was their number one thing right there. Is getting the Grom back. Go ahead, Mike. I mean, we got another bat. We got a. We got some relievers, which we needed. Yeah. We got, okay. I'm we got sure. Yes, you did. From, we got the dude from Dan last week. Thank you, Dan. I mean, <laughs> the dude from Dan. <laughs> <laughs> listen, the dude listen. from there hit me up with anybody else. Yeah, <laughs> not, I mean, if y'all got some, y'all got some relievers, some middle relief. You know, we need somebody to get through the six and finish. You got any of them? You can set up there. We might have but, somebody. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we did a little something. We did enough. But y'all gave him Joey Gallo for a big and cheese. No, the L.A. a burrito and a, <laughs> and a tour to Hog Hollywood Walk of Fame. Like I didn't street tacos. Yeah, <gasps> street tacos. Um, street y'all tacos. Y'all got something back. Something. They're big out there, those street tacos. Good stuff. Yeah, they're good, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh. The motor oil you dip it in. The burrito. That. So, yeah, the um, the Yankees came through. They they, they did a lot. Uh, um, Hey, my my man, Aaron Judge, man, he continues to have a monster season, man. He has 43 homers, I believe, now. Um, yeah. They done messed up. Can't trade them now. Listen. They're going to have to he's empty. on no steroids. Everybody love him. Say again? So ain't nobody saying he on no steroids, right? Well, not yet. Natural. Well, not yet. I mean, it's, it's you know, uh, the season's not over yet. So we shall see. We we, we shall see. He, he's having a good season, man. He's he been on himself. He's having a good season. Um, I think he'll have like 65-plus home runs before it's over, done, over and done with. He's He's just seeing the ball so good. In my opinion, uh, they lost the, the Yankees lost the last two to Seattle. But let me go to the power rankings real quick. Uh, the Yankees are sixty nine and thirty four as of yesterday. Uh, they are number one according to the Athletic. The Dodgers are number two. 
the Astros are number three. Uh, Mike's beloved New York Metropolitans are number four with Jacob DeGron coming back. The, Met, the Mets have a big five-game series start tonight. I think if I looked at my ticker on my television here, they was up 5-1 to one here in the fifth inning. The Braves, five after, it's 5-3 to three now. So the Braves, uh, aforementioned Braves, are number five. The Toronto Blue Jays are number six. Uh, they call it, they fired their manager, and they've been on fire ever since. Uh, the Padres, number seven. Bray, excuse me, the Milwaukee Brewers are number eight. The Seattle Mariners playing very good. Mariners could be um, making the um, postseason for the first time in almost 20 years. 55 and 48, St. Louis Cardinals. Cardinals just always have left-handed pitching for whatever reason, man. They just – it don't matter, man. What year, ever, what year – Cardinals are always right there. They always have great left-handed pitching. The Phillies, without without um, Bryce Harper, are hanging right in there. They're 55 and 47. They're le- they moved up from to 11 from 13th last week. Number 12 of Tampa Bay, 54 and 48. Number 13 the Minnesota Twins. Number 14 the Cleveland Guardians. Number 15, man, shout out to the Orioles for hanging in there, man. The Orioles are playing pretty good. They're 51 and 51. And... Eric's adopted team, the Chicago White Sox. They round up the power 16 rankings. We don't do 25 no more because it's past the All-Star game. And D-Dub says, hey, when it's past the All-Star game, hey, it's time to pay attention uh, for real, for real, what's going on with baseball. And I think it'll be some good races down the stretch. If you don't know, they have increased the postseason of baseball from, I believe it's it's eight, eight teams per league now. So... You had you had six. They added two more. It's eight. So you got your wild cards, kind of like football. You got your wild cards, and then I think they play the three game series, and then they go from there. So yeah, you play 162 games to play more games. I don't understand it. Well, you know what? Back up, Kev. I do understand it. They did it for the what? Love of money, man. Yes. Yeah, you are. That's know. why they did it. Yeah, yeah. Skrilla. Skrilla. <laughs> Shout out to the Orioles. And this yes. is August the 4th, and they are a game and a half back of the wild card. That is amazing. Yeah. So, the way they've been all these years, that's truly amazing. No, nah, so they, they definitely been doing. Um, uh, Dan, before I could go to my next segment, you had anything for hockey for a little bit, for about two or three minutes, man. Sorry we missed you for the last time for the thing. Anything brewing with hockey, hockey should be back next month with training account opener in September. Uh, I mean, we can just run through real quick, the, like the Metro division. Yeah, go ahead. Give me that. The Metro and, and then the, hit on a couple of the, the teams that were late in the playoffs. So your Rangers, they signed Kako. They signed Sammy Blast back and Gautier. Um, they also signed Halak, I think, from Boston. They got Carpenter from... I think Calgary, and they also got Vincent Trocheck, who was with the Pan- or, uh, the Hurricanes, and then the Panthers before that, and then of course um, you guys traded your backup Gorgiev to uh, the Avalanche for oh, as a twenty twenty yeah. two third and fifth, yeah. and then twenty three year a third round pick. Uh, Islanders really haven't done anything. They traded for Romanov. Uh, for Montreal for a first round pick, and then the possibility is is them signing Caudry, but they got to make some cap space and they got to sign Noah Dobson yet, so they're pretty much holding up the market for everybody else that's left being signed until that that uh, domino falls. And then of course you get Capitals. They got Kemper from the Avalanche, uh, the goaltending, uh, the winning. Uh, the cup, and then they got Gustafson, Dylan Strom, and Matt Irwin. And then they traded for Ottawa's Connor Brown, and they also traded um, a 20, 20 second, second round third pick. And the Devils, uh, they got their backup that Venisic. And then Columbus, I think they made the biggest splash in the free agency. They got John of Gaudreau from Calgary, they signed him, and got for Branson, they re-signed the goalie, Vosvik and Lame. So they have a pretty good first time. Lame, Vosvik, Kudrow. And then they made some cap space by sending Borkstan to Seattle for a couple picks. Uh, the Canes really haven't signed a whole bunch of people uh, as far as free agents, but they signed um, 
Andre Case, I believe he's with Toronto. And they re-signed uh, Ethan Bearer and Dezingle. And then they made some trades, which this is a laugher to me. They got Max Pacioretty and Dylan Coughlin from Vegas for future considerations. So basically a puck bag. They they picked those guys up. So they, 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 they got them for free. That was a total salary dump by Vegas. And then where's the Mikey? He got a bacon egg and cheese for him. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So and then the, they oh, traded. Okay. The, the Canes also traded to get the defenseman Brett Burns from – the Sharks with uh, La- uh, Lane Peterson, and they sent uh, Lorenz and Mock and Manemi in a pick back. And then right before the um, the draft, they dumped uh, Tony D'Angelo to the Flyers for a second, third, and fourth pick in the 22 draft. Uh, the Devils, they signed Andre Pilat and Brendan Smith. Then they made that trade with the Caps to get the goalie, Venisic. And then they also made a deal with the Penguins. Uh, for Marino, and then I think we got Ty Smith for him, kind of a uh, young defenseman too, so it's kind of a swap of young defensemen. And then the uh, Devils also traded with the Bruins to get Eric Halla for Pavel Zavakia, or Zaka. Uh, let's see, who else are we missing here? Oh, the Penguins. So the Penguins resigned Malkin, Rust, Latang, Raquel, DeSmith, Oliver Joseph, Kapanen, and Hunnan. And then they also signed Archibald from Edmonton in the offseason. Uh, they got Jan Ruda from Tampa Bay, uh, the defenseman. And then they also traded um, with Montreal for Matheson to Montreal for Petrie and Poling. And then, of course, we said that the Marino for the Ty Smith. And then a couple of the other, I guess, big things were uh, after looking at this trade, I, I kind of went, wow. So. Florida traded for Matthew Chuck from Calgary. So they lost Gaudreau, and now they lost to Chuck. So they did, right. So they got a, a, a 2025 fourth-round conditional pick into Chuck. And then Calgary gets Huberdo, Mackenzie Weger, and then Cole Schwent, I think is his name, which is a, a prospect, which he, from what I heard, he's supposed to be pretty decent, and a conditional first round in 2025. So they got two players – a first round draft pick and a good prospect for one guy. So I, I thought that was really good for, for Calgary after losing those guys. But like um, Toronto, they signed Pierre Engvall, Kelly Yarnbrook, Yarn Croak, Jordy Ben, and Nick Ab- Abdul Bell, the guy that dropped the cup after winning it at center ice and dented <laughs> the shit out of it. <laughs> So he had to leave town after he damaged it, I guess. They got Samsonov. Ilya Samsonov is a backup goalie. They re-signed Giordano. And then the real head twister is they let Jack Campbell go in free agency for, and they picked up Matt Murray. So, yeah, he's won the cup twice, but can he stay healthy? That's the biggest question. So you, you're going to have Samsonov and Murray as your backups. And it kind of seems like a Mrazic Campbell duo might, you know, might have been a little bit better option than what they went with, but hey, it is what it is. And then Tampa, of course, you know, they lost uh, Plot to Jersey, but they signed Ian Cole. Uh, they re signed uh, Cernak, Sorelli, Sergachev, uh, Namesikov, Nick Paul. <clears throat> so they did all right, you know, filling some of the needs that they needed. I'm trying to think who else we got here. The Avs re signed a lot of the guys that they traded for. Lekkonen, uh, Josh Manson, Darren Helm, Cogliano, Nuchuskin. And then, of course, they got your backup goalie. And then, you know, one of the other oddities is, like, the Ducks weren't all that great last year, Anaheim, but they end up signing two-year Rangers, uh, Vetrano and Strom, Ryan Strom. And then after Klingberg fired his agent because he couldn't get a long-term deal, he ends up signing a one-year, $7 million deal to go to Anaheim also. And I guess really, like like I said, the, the Kadri deal is going to be the big one right. wherever, wherever he decides to sign because you still got um, Evan Rodriguez, Phil Kessel. You, you still have some names out there, but... Kadri's he, still out there? Who's that? He hasn't signed? Kadri, he still hasn't signed yet? No. Nope. Wow. So there's word, like Boston really hasn't signed a whole lot of people. And there's word that he's, you know, possibly Boston... It might go to the Islanders. 
and I'm trying to think what the third team was. He might. Well, they're not going to be able to resign him in uh, Colorado. They, they're just not going to have all that money. Mm-hmm. But the other, the other real surprise, I guess, in the off season was the Wings were pretty. The Red Wings were pretty, you know, eh, last year. But they end up getting several good players is uh, free agents. They end up picking up uh, David Perron. Dominic Kublik, Ben Sherratt, Ole Mata, Andrew Kopp from your Rangers. Um, who else? Andrew Philly Kopp. Huso, they traded with uh, St. Louis to, as a goalie. And then they also got Robert Haig as, uh, I believe, a defenseman. So they, they, they made some some good moves to, to strengthen their team. They got a lot of young, good kids. And then, like, the other, I guess, uh, if you want to look at playoff contender teams like the Oilers, they signed uh, Calvin Pickard as a backup goalie, Brent Kulak. Then they got Jack Campbell from Toronto. They signed him as their goalie, and they end up signing K- Evander Kane again. And then I think just oh, recently Kane. they they signed Yamamoto back and Paul Yarve. So, I don't know. We'll see how that, that shapes up for them. I think that's a better deal in net than what they had last year. Right. And, and hopefully, you know. It might turn them around and be able to, you know, get them a little farther into playoffs. And last but not least, I forgot one from the Metro. Mr. Cliff Fletcher said it was too much work to move people around and make some salary space to sign wow. you know, the, the hometown kid, Johnny Gurdro. So they didn't sign him. So what did they do? This, this is a good one. I had to write this one down. I was nothing. So, no, 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 no. They traded for D'Angelo before the draft. So they got a defenseman. And then they also signed your Justin Braun from your Rangers. And then they signed Nick Delore, which is kind of like your uh, Dave Brown of the 80s. And his brother, <laughs> Dave, David Brown, Zach, they signed Zach McEwen. <laughs> so basically, I think Fletcher is... Uh, unaware that it is 2022, not late 1970s, early 80s, and you just don't beat the shit out of everybody to win games anymore. You actually have to have talent because they let Drew go, the Vorchek go, um, the the defenseman Ling Bloom, I think it was, that had the that had the bout with cancer. So I don't know what the hell they're doing in Philadelphia, but it'll be at least six easy wins for the entire mm. Metro. Dan, that was Dan with hockey. Dan, when does the season start? When does training camp start? Today's what the fourth. Yes. So we got like sixty-five, maybe seventy days. It'd be like the first week October for most for a lot of teams, and then like the tenth or so for the rest. So they should open training camp in about a month. Well, they're, I think they're already doing like rookie camps and stuff like that. And then, approaching, approaching quickly. Yep, and I can forget about pirates for a while because you know it's after it's after July, so we know they're done. Yeah. <laughs> next week, next week, uh, just to give you a peek. Uh, next week, we'll be have doing a standalone uh, NFL show where we'll be. Um, everybody has been tasked with taking a few teams. We talk about them and uh, talk about where they're going to be at, and um, you know, during the season, we're going to have fun with that. So, in the words, DA, we actually talk about sports. Yes, this this uh, this episode, you know, fortunately, we had to, you know, talk about some things. But um, it is in the world that we live in, man. Unfortunately, some of that stuff is intertwined. Some people take it too far. We don't take it too far. We'll mention it and we'll move right along. So, but I do want to end this on a on a, on a sad and happy note. We had. In my opinion, we had two great legends in the sports that passed away this past week. We had Bill Russell. Bill Russell, the honorary, not honorary, excuse me, Bill Russell died and passed away at 88, NBA legend with the Boston Celtics. Bill Russell won a record 11 championships during his 14 seasons with the Boston Celtics, including two as a player coach in 1968 and 1969. Bill Russell also won a gold medal at the 1956 Melbourne Games. He averaged 14.1 points per game and he was just a dominant dude in, in, in the big league in, uh, in, the, in the NBA um, he won the gold that year so he, he was just a he was a true true great NBA player uh, a legend he'll be missed I like how most of the um, 
NBA guys that came after him to pay homage to him. And I'm I'm an avid believer of paying um, homage to people who have paved the paved the path before you. I won't get into that bag. Nope, won't do it. But you know those folks that come before you and that have trailblazed away. I think you should pay some kind of homage to them. Anyway, and the other notable um, um, sports um, death I want to no- notice, and I'll get the guy's opinion, then we'll get out of here. Is Vince Scully? Um, if you're a baseball head, and on Saturday afternoons. Ben Scully was on the game of the week doing baseball. He was a LA, LA Dodger, Brooklyn Dodger guy. He was been broadcasting since he was 22 years old back in when the Dodgers played in Brooklyn. Uh, but he was doing his thing. He was the voice of baseball and he also did some football. Um, DA will perk up when DA knows when he called the catch. He called, he called the catch for the Niners when, um, when, um, Montana threw the, the clock. That was Vince Scully. Uh, if you're a Mets fan like Mikey, Mikey, uh, I don't know if you, well, Mikey heard, Mikey heard the, the call when it says, Hey, it gets, it gets in the bucks of his legs. If you heard that, if you're a Mets fan, it brings chills. chills. I, remember that sat- I remember that Saturday night and was watching the game and it was like, how the hell did the Red Sox lose this game? And then people don't know that was only game six. And then game seven, the Mets just ran away with Wrapped it. it and ran the World Series. That wasn't Game Seven. That was Game Six when the ball went be went under Buck, Buckner's leg. But that was Vince Scully on the call again. He had another important call with the um, Kirk Gibson. Kirk Gibson was playing on a bum leg. I think his only at bat in the series. He yep. comes up pinch hitter against the Oakland A's and uh, playing as the Dodgers. His last time the, Do- the Dodgers, well, before this, they won this last couple of years ago. When he came up as a pinch hitter on a bum leg, he hits the ball into the right field stands, and that was his only um, his only uh, appearance during that World Series in 1988. And they won the series, man. So two legends are gone. They're both legends, Bill Russell and Ben Scully. I'll start with D-Dub. What do you think about those two guys? And then we're going to get out of here. Yo, uh, start with Bill Russell. Bill Russell, a legend uh, on and off the court. So, um Yes. You know, greatly miss there's so much was in the he had what did they say uh skin in the game he had he he was in it so um we could probably we could really truly say he was he is the 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 true goat i mean you know if you want to all the ones that won count championships and all that you know so um you know i didn't again then why I, I didn't see him play per se but we know when you're talking basketball, you, you, you want to talk Bill Russell. So, uh, played against Palmer, huh? Say it again. Yeah, play, yeah, Palmer. stop. Man, don't get me. And, um, shout out to Vince, uh, <laughs> Vince Scully, man. Uh, New York boy. Yeah, I do it to me. So, Bronx, New York guy. So, you know, Vince Scully, he called some great games. Um, he's been around. I mean, it's just crazy, man, because he's been around so long. And, you know, the Dodgers, been in, you know, calling the Dodgers games. Yes. like that so you know two two great legends one on the court and one off the court and behind the microphone so shout out uh to their families you know rest in peace to both of those guys thank you d-dub da what you got for me for, for hey, russell and... personified. um you know they did what they did man and um you know they're they sent they set a level of excellence um, that, you know, other guys have tried to um, come behind. So, uh, got nothing bad to say, man. It's all good. God bless them. Um, and that's it. Thank you, DA. Um, Eric, what you got? Um, when, when we talk about elite legends of any sport or any era, um, I, I often say it's your imprint on the game. Yes. And both of these gentlemen respect yes. put their imprint on the game. You cannot talk Boston Celtics without mentioning Bill Russell, or you probably get stomped out. Um, and say, oh, well, you know, he was just part of those teams. No, he was the anchor of those teams. Let's not get it twisted. I did not see him, but I watched tape, heard people who watched him and all this other stuff. The man was a bad man. And 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 um, Mr. Scully, I, I remember watching uh, 
watching the game with my with my father. That was probably one of the standout moments of my baseball uh baseball watching, baseball viewing is when Kirk Gibson hit that bomb and he was trotting around the bases and all this other stuff and and just the excitement and scully you know it, it was just one of those moments that you'll never forget man so um rest in peace to both of those gentlemen and uh many families uh find some some comfort appreciate that e and what you got well, you know like everybody said you know i think they were great ambassadors and role models for both of their sports you know that they covered and played in i you know i I can remember listening to Vince Scully as a kid, you know, watching, watching those baseball games. Um, you know, I remember watching the Kurt Gibson home run and just, just, just watching that live. It, it was incredible, but you know, you know, thoughts of prayers with their families. May they rest in peace. Appreciate that, Dan. Last but not least on this topic, uh, Mike Mills is the youngest one. Mike, what you got for us? Um, Bill Russell, Vince Scully. Um, legends in both their respective fields, Mr. Scully in the booth, Mr. Russell on the court, you know, um, Bill Russell was a Boston Celtic and we know how Boston could be, especially in in that era, that time he played in. So he's a, definitely a role model. And me personally, as a fan of, I feel like people aren't, I feel like I'm a fan of both the, the game on the field and the commentary. I feel like a lot of people aren't a fan of commentary. But if you hmm. are, then you know the LA Dodgers, that's Vince Scully is synonymous. You instantly think LA Dodgers. So rest in peace to both of them, both of those gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Well Mike, uh you're gonna speak a little bit more. Because Mike is gonna tell us where is that, where we at. You see that little red ticker at the bottom right there? (laughs) (laughs) That's a cheat sheet. You can find us us in all those places. Right now, it's Twitter. Find us on Twitter. I I, I see YouTube. Find us on YouTube. (laughs) Now, message. Y'all can find us anywhere podcasts are being stored, placed, and ready to be distributed at. Find us on multiple platforms or your major ones. You can find us on our own website at Sports Chasers. We also, I just um, discovered. Um, shout out to our uh, syndicated team, Podatives. Um, we're also on Odyssey, one of the bigger um, platforms out there. Um, next, it will be Exxon Radio. They have a um, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> quiet mic. Uh, <laughs> we uh, we're on Odyssey, so we're on that platform, man. So. Hey, we had a very good show tonight. Very good show tonight. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it, man. Uh, Derwin, thank you so much uh, for coming through. Derwin uh, got at me. He said, yeah, when football comes back, he wants all in on football. Derwin, I got you, my brother. I got you. I got you. Um, Yeah, because football is standing good. But like I said, we have a standalone show next week. Next week, August the 11th, we will be talking nothing but football. Nothing but what's about football. So, we're going to go 1 through 32. We're going to talk about all the teams, 90 minutes. And uh, we're going to have fun with that. Um, by the time next Thursday rolls around, we'll have uh, one preseason week underneath our belt. Right? Because they only playing, what, two? Correct? That's what they said, right? Yeah, two. Three. Yeah. Three. They needed three. three. Should, be, should, should be none. <laughs> I'm with DA. It should be none. I don't know about that. None. Then. God damn. Yeah, none. Nah, 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 give them like none. two or three. No. Nah, no. Nah. College kids 18 years old. They play one game, and it's the first game. <laughs> okay, that's it. You know, they don't need to play. You know, but game one, just play. It's football, it ain't that hard, man? Yeah. Well, yeah, you, you, uh, you gotta, nah, bro. You need that. You need that extra practice, man. You nah, you know you don't. And you, know, you go from Alabama to, to 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 New England, uh, not New England, to uh, the New York Jets. It's, it's quite You're different. You're going to need a lot of practice. I, I, Alabama yeah, exactly. will beat the Jets. So, but exactly. No, you know, That's um, my point. But, you know, as Tom Brady, what he feels about preseason. Oh, yeah. His his um his well, center is gone. He lost his center and a guard. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, that happens. Preseason or week five or Super Bowl, not it if, happens. Not if you don't play, though. Not if you're not playing. Oh, well, I, 
Things happen. But they, I got you, man. I, don't, I they, just don't agree with it. They, they, we agree to disagree. DA, why you why you there? Parting shots real quick, and we're going to get out of here. Hey, everyone. Thank you. Have a good week, man. Everyone be safe and be careful, man. Take care of yourselves. That's all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Mike Mills, what you got for us, sir? Um, thank you for everybody for tuning in. Shout out to y'all. Y'all the reason we do this. Not just ourselves. And also... Shout out to Power 104.4 FM, the internet radio station that's spinning my record more, featuring me, BB. It'll be up there multiple times throughout the day, so go ahead and tune in and catch that. If what didn't record know is that, Michael? Um, I said more. The, the record more. The name of the song is More, featuring me, me, V. It's a cool little bop. Go on and if check that know. out. Mike Mill also doubles as a hip hop artist. So like and I said, Batman. Okay, oh okay. And Batman. I, I didn't know that. So that's news to me. He gave his secret away. Uh Dad, they canceled the Batman, the Batwoman um cart uh, not cartoon, the movie. I wonder that it must have been trash. That's another podcast. Hey, go ahead. Party shots, party shots. I'm having fun tonight. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. <laughs> Yo, man, it's always great to see the guys talk about what we love to watch and mess around with. As always, um, everybody. Be good, be safe, take care of your fellow man, woman, and child. And um, we'll do this again next week for NFL. It's going to be a good one, so please tune in. You know yep. where to find us. Tell your family and friends, full NFL. We're going to get up at it. We're going to get at it. Dan, what you got for us, sir? I just want to say you know, thanks to Derwin for the for the golf. Appreciate that. Um, it's great to see everybody again. Been a minute since we've been on. Uh, you know, for those you know esports bugs out there that you know want to check it out, the CDL uh, Championships is this weekend on YouTube. So they just started today and it'll be run until Sunday. And you know everybody take care. Yeah, um, shout out to to Dan and, and Eric. They're our esports guys. I know we haven't had an opportunity to talk about it, but these guys in the near future we're going to work it out where they'll have something to share when it comes to esports because that's a sport too. That's a it's a huge sport. Uh, it's the reason why I think Madden is jacked up, but uh, I digress. Um, <laughs> NFL jacked up on that one again. Like I always well, say, you can't always blame. Let, you can't always blame let people two that signed the contract. Yeah, you, you can't always blame the guy that signed the contract. You also got to blame the guy that offered the contract. The NFL yeah. should have never ever offered a mm-hmm. exclu- nah. They should have let you um, keep going, man. Yeah, uh, I'll do Daryl D. Dell's part in shop. He he got something in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard the microwave. Oh, you better the be clear what he got in the oven. Let, 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 let oh, yeah. <laughs> got hot well, no, got this hot is hot the Sports podcast. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. We already lost the sponsors when DA came, came hot. This is what came hot. I've been there earlier, boy. Um, yeah, D. Dub, uh, D. Dub said, um. You know, he'll get at us a little bit later, man. But um, shout out to D-Dub as he continues to do whatever. My part shot, man, uh, I don't have nothing deep. I don't have nothing heavy. Thank you for all those that um, joined with us. As y'all can see, we got a, we got a new streaming um, partner here. Um, and we're trying to work out the kinks, so you might see us with the green screen still showing to us. I promise you we're going to work through that. We'll, we'll look really professional. We'll look really tattered together. We'll fix the mics and stuff like that. This is our first first week doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We should have tested. It. I'm sorry, uh, we did, but you know, this is our first week, so hopefully it was wasn't too bearable. Because I know as a sound person that does sound, you know, sound and video, that's very important to have, and also to keep people's attention. If you got bad sound, it's not it's not too pleasant on the ears. And if you have bad bad video, it's not pleasant on the eyes. But I promise you, we're gonna work it out. I appreciate those that. That tuned in, uh, Eric. Who was that that ch- chimed in the oh, yeah. con- in, in the my comments? Friend, that's my good friend Lynette Harden. Shout out all the way from Brooklyn, New York, man. Appreciate you. Talk to you. Thank you, Miss Lynette. Appreciate you for my, uh, um, you know, you. hanging out with us tonight, man. If you got anybody else, tell us to hang out. Hey, if you want to be a super fan, hey, go to our website, go to the guest form page. Hey, fill out the guest form page if you want to be a super fan. Hey, fifteen minutes of fame. We can talk about all the sports you want. And uh, we can get at us, and we'll we'll talk your sports, man. We'll fit you in, and we'll do that, man. Mm-hmm. But you know what I'm saying? So on behalf of myself, I'm Kevin O. Warren, your host and moderator, Daryl D. Del Warren. 
James the Angry One Warren, um, Dan our Hockey Dude, Dorian, the DA All Britain, Mike Mills. I'm Kevin L. Warren, your host and moderator. This is the Sports Chasers Podcast. Hey, y'all be good. Y'all be blessed. Peace. See y'all next week. All right, y'all, I'm out.